بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمد ونصلي على رسول الكريم أما بعد currently in the lockdown period there are many people who are stressed depending on their situation waiting anticipating when is it going to end when things are going to come back to normal based on their businesses their job opportunities their supplies etc 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 then there's another group of people who are not worried about the lockdown because their life hasn't changed whether it's their businesses have been running normal as bob wise they've got all the means necessary etc so for them the lockdown is not a stress actually they enjoying the lockdown there are many people who are capitalizing maximizing on this opportunity so they enjoying the lockdown likewise when a person dies he'll be in a cover if he had all the asbab he'll enjoy that lockdown on the day of kiyama when the sun will be above people's heads some people will be enjoying that time they'll be the vip servants of allah and the arsh of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like that every stage in akhirat so we need to be checking that am i prepared for akhirat if i cannot manage a simple thing like this which we have all the amenities of life then at that stage where it's going to be more difficult more hard the situation cannot be forecasted and it's a one man show you on your own so that's why we are encouraged to turn to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this mubarak ayyam it's an opportunity so zabia basriya used to say in istighfarana yahtaju ila istighfarin kathirin that even in our toba in our repentance we need to make toba on that toba Am I making that amount of toba repentance turning to Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala how I should be turning to Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala when a person makes toba it's either of the two either it's in an action of good trying to surpass or he done bad for example a person who wants to become a gold medalist let's say runner in the 100 meter race if he came out second and got the silver he will have regret so there are people who are complying and doing their best but they still have regret not because they've done wrong but they've not done what they should have done then there's a second category who people who are runners they run fast but they're not olympic grade so let's two categories in good and two categories in bad where a person does a wrong intentionally somebody kills somebody so the shariat says that he has to be killed you harm somebody al ain bil ain wal udhn bil udhn tell be qisas and one is unintentional so a person makes a mistake a person didn't intend to do a wrong but that happened so if, if he did something let's say he was driving recklessly somebody died he won't have the punishment of a qatil amad somebody who kills somebody intentionally but it will be a qatil khata the punishment will follow but it will be lighter the person who's achieved the goal the highest no matter what he's achieved the goal he'll still have an ambition and a desire to achieve goal again and he will not stop his effort so there are some servants of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who are the gold medalists sahaba they did and exhausted every avenue but still too they were not happy with their sacrifices they carried on making effort then there are some people who haven't reached the goal they on silver or bronze they see what did the people of gold do so we can achieve gold they are striving all the time and then you have the third category of people who are good runners but they don't want to be olympic medalists they are good at what they doing but they not striving hard enough so all the amal of khair allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us which category do i fit in all of them have regrets they still striving but on different levels and another scenario on the second case where it is bad things so there are people who disobey allah intentionally and there are people who disobey allah not intentionally but it happens they get caught in the moment they get trapped so even if a person does it in unintentional but there is repercussions so you made a mistake but there is consequences there was a father who his young son did not have the capacity to see him slaughtering the sheep but he showed him slaughtering the sheep 
The child took a lesson, so one of the days he took the kitchen knife and he went to go slaughter his brother. As the mother came out, she seen that and she went in a panic. She went to call the father. The child was in the kitchen while the stove was on. So the other child in that panic, the mother didn't see that. So that child went and ran into the stove. In the meanwhile, when the father got the news, he ran for the child. That child that slaughtered his brother ran to the jungles and in that the father got bitten, eaten by a lion and the child fell down a mountain. So in just one situation, so much repercussions. So we need to be checking ourselves that am I the gold medalist, am I the bronze, am I the silver, am I my ambition, my focus, my attention. What level is it on? So even if a person is committing a guna, sometimes we brush it off. We say, no, it's a small sin. لا تنظر إلى صغر الذم ولكن انظر إلى من أسيت We shouldn't even be looking how small the guna is. Like if there is a husband and wherever they go, whichever opportunity, he looks at strange woman. So he tells the wife also, that woman is so beautiful and she has this here. No, but I'm not doing anything wrong. I didn't do any, I didn't commit any zina. No. But the fact that's your wife and you love her and you're looking at somebody else says enough. It says a lot. Sunnah. Somebody says, no, it's just sunnah. So Sahaba practice on sunnah because it was sunnah. We leave sunnah because it is sunnah. So we shouldn't look at how small the guna is because guna attracts other guna. When we open the hole of the dam, no matter how small it is, eventually it's going to wipe out the entire city. It needs to be patched. So we shouldn't open up the doors of sun. Two friends are walking by the river, one said expensive leather, he jumped into the water to grab it, then he started drowning. His friend said, leave it, it's not important. He said, I'm trying to leave it, it's not leaving me. He grabbed a wolf. It wasn't just a piece of leather, it was a live, wolf, uh, a live bear. He grabbed a bear. So the bear didn't want to leave him. So guna is like that. So it's all up to us. Nowadays people are saying, we need speakers that are very good orators. We need motivational speakers. No, no, no. We don't need good speakers. We need good listeners. Because based on my desire and ambition, even though there are no good speakers, there's no motivations, I myself am motivated. I'm not depending on anybody. I'm not depending on the people around me. I am depending on Allah and I will focus to Allah. Whereas when a person starts depending on others, then they don't even progress. They become to a stage in life where they start blaming everybody for all their problems. So whichever problems you have in life is because of somebody else. And those people don't ever move forward. Why? Because number one is they've handed over blame to somebody else. So they're waiting for that to happen. Secondly, their potential to move forward is not does not materialize why because they are stuck on a certain point somebody gets a flat tire either he can say oh i'm gonna wait for people to come pass by or i'll phone my this year or this year or if you know how to change the tire then change it and move on now your depends on are you relying on external factors or internal factors they say there was one motivational speaker who retired due to depression. Why? He had discovered that he had a B negative blood type. He had B negative blood type. So if our attention in my towards you is to, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then I don't base my progress in anything of the dunya, any people of the dunya, any conditions of the dunya, any situations of the dunya. But I look at what I need to do at that time. Otherwise, these people just carry on hoping and waiting and waiting their uh, entire life and complain, continue to complain. And it does not benefit them one but. They said there was one youngster by the name of Fadal from in a tiny Moroccan village. He was quite brilliant in school. He had the potential, but he used to waste his time. He was lazy. He used to prank all the other students. He shouldn't do anything of the work that the teacher used to tell him. So his teacher got fed up with him and complained to the mother. So the mother heard the complaints many a time and she decided this is enough now. I'm taking my son out of school. 
So she took him out of school and she said, maybe we move to another city also, that'll help him. Uh, many years later, 25 years later, uh, this lady teacher became very ill. She had a cardio disorder. Doctor said that she needed open heart surgery, but there was only one surgeon that was known that will be able to operate on this complication. So she agreed, operation was done, operation was successful. After the operation, as she was regaining consciousness, she witnessed this handsome surgeon in front of her and she was thrilled and amazed that now she was back to normal and she could live a normal life. And she was going to thank him. And as she was going to thank him, her face started turning blue. She raised her hand. She tried to flag the doctor and tried to tell him something. The doctor tried to understand, but he was too late. And he could not understand. He was, he was shocked that what went wrong? What went wrong? He couldn't understand it. This is the first case ever that it was successful. There was no negative signs. And then suddenly she turned blue. So he tried to gather his composure and then he looked around and he seen Fadil, that same young boy who was in the tiny Moroccan city. He was busy with the vacuum cleaner and he unplugged the ventilator. He unplugged the ventilator. So whoever thought that this doctor was a young boy has been watching too many movies waiting or reading too many motivational books or reading too many fairy tales or being too much in Bollywood. It all ends up to you. What am I going to do? So if we are going for gold, then I need to have my target. Then those who have the target, even the smallest of small affects them. Ya you and us to go ilallahi wastaghfiru. Oh people, turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and make tawbah, repent to him. I make tawbah at least a hundred times a day. The Nabi of Allah, who had so much glad tidings, Sahaba, who had so much glad tidings, how much did they exhaust their lives? So they say, Hasanatul Abrar, Sayyatul Muqarrabin. Those that they do good, the good actions of the pious is a sin for those that are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To understand this example, we have an amateur cook and we have a professional cook. The amateur cook will make his food how he wants to. It will be fine and decent. But the professional cook, from the temperature to the meat, how long it should be cooked, what temperature it should be cooked at, what grams of each ingredient needs to be put in, the exact quantities, the cooking time exactly. Everything is specific, but the tasting is different. Why? Because one is an amateur and one is a professional. So either I'm amateur in deen, I don't worry about my khushu in salat, concentration, whether I read not, etc. My tilawat of Quran, whether I'm reading with tajweed or not. Deen, whether I know all the messile of deen or none of the messile. Mawlana Sayyid Khan Sabrah when he used to travel, occupation, he used to write student. Such a great scholar of deen. But he used to write student. His whole life, he was a student. So we need to make a decision. Which direction am I going to go? And when a person makes a decision, he's going to leave all of this here like a person. First thing we need to do is that he should make an intention and have regret in his heart. Regret that what did I do? The mother filled water in the bath. It was too hot. She didn't check it. She put the child in the bath and the child burned. Third degree burns. How much regret that mother has that when she put the child in the bath? In her whole life, she will have regret. When I come to Iguna, how much regret do I have? Secondly, we should make an intention. I'm never going to ever return to that Guna. So if I decide I want to be a gold medalist, then I'm going to make effort to be that gold medalist. When we tell somebody, go fetch water, based on your intention, will you fetch water? Somebody will fetch a glass, somebody will fetch a bucket, somebody will fetch a tanker, somebody will connect a pipe and have a dam. Based on our intention to make Toba, will Allah's help come? Number three, we should stop that guna immediately. So to understand this, and we'll get on the example number four, is not to go near that sun ever again. La taqrabu zina, anything that's going to take you close to that guna. 
So if a person is bad company, bad friends, if it's a cell phone, if it's a sites, don't even go near there. Number five, get rid of anything that's connected to that. If a person listens to music in his music series, get rid of all of that. Number six, find a replacement. He's listened to music, now I need to listen to Qiraat. Number seven, have istizar of the azab in akhirat and secondly, punish yourself in dunya. If I do this wrong year, then I will fast so many days. I will give so much sadaqah. Number eight, go into the company of those that are good. So these are eight steps. Like a person who wants to diet, he goes into the company of those that are good. Now he makes a near that I'm going to diet. Now whatever happens, hook or crook, I'm going to stop. When you look in the mirror, you have that regret. Hey, you know what? This diet, I need to take it seriously. When you put yourself on the scale, you realize that when, you, when a person goes on the scale, the scale gives you a message that uh, one at a time, please. Number three, when you see all of those things, chocolates, cakes, etc., you forget seeing it. You make sure there's nothing in the house. And even somebody offers you, say, no, muff. And if ever one day it happens that you do it, and you're going to have guilt, and you're going to have remorse, when you eat the chocolate also, you have a lot of guilt and remorse, that what am I doing? It's going to catch up with me. So these are all steps for us to stay away from guna, to make sure we don't go back to that. So we should try to apply this, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq of making amal. The wazifa which we were doing yesterday was to read 100 times morning and evening, third kalima. Nabi alayhi salam told sahaba, istakthiru min al salihat. That make it a habit to do those amal, those good actions which shall remain forever. Sahaba asked, what are those actions? Nabi alayhi salam said, Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illa Allah, wa Allahu akbar, wa la hawla wa la quwata illa billah. Wa hunna yahputna al-khataya. That they say in this adhkar, these wazaif, like how leaves fall from a tree, your gunas will fall as well. Wa hunna min kunuz al-jannah. And these kalimat are amongst the treasures of Jannah. So make it a habit to recite these kalimas. And the amal for today, since we're busy with the chapter of istighfar and toba, Ya ayyu nas tubu ila Allah wa astaghfiru. Oh my ummah, constantly make toba and istighfar. Fa inni atubu fil yawm mi amarra. So morning and evening, Nabi alayhi salam said, at least I make toba a hundred times. So ulama say morning and evening, we should make it a habit to make istighfar a hundred times. Astaghfirullah is sufficient. If we know any longer istighfar, then we should say it as well. Astaghfirullah alladhi la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyu al-qayyum wa atubu ilay. Hadith mentions ghufirallahu wa in kana. His sins are forgiven. Even it is the amount of uh, the foam in the ocean or water in the ocean, his sins will be forgiven. So if we know the different istighfar, uh, if we know different type of toba, whether it's a short one or long one, let us make it habit to make istighfar at least 100 times morning and evening.